The mouth of the tunnel posed a few technical problems because obviously firing the sledge out of the tunnel was, was a special effect that we all thought, don't know how it's going to work really. Gert worked out how to do it and I thought I'd better put lots of cameras around there. I think I had about nine cameras, which is a lot. Some of the cameras we put in special housings to protect them in case of impact. Unfortunately, one of the housings wasn't very well built. Uh, I was surprised. Uh, and it, it was that one that was hit by the flying sledge and it destroyed the camera that was in there. And I don't like destroying cameras because I love cameras. They're, they're fantastic, reliable machines that transport the film, lock it in position, expose it. And they're beautifully made and should be beautifully maintained and treated with a lot of respect. So I was appalled at, you know, at the sight of a dead camera. And so the following, about a week later, we had to do the explosion on uh, the mouth of the tunnel. And Gert had put 170 gallons of petrol underneath the platform and around it and inside the tunnel. And we ordered all these fire boxes from Germany, but they got held up in customs at the border. So I didn't have very good fire protection. So the grips built proper sturdy housings over the cameras and then we lined them with fire blankets and put glass over the front, and enough to protect them from a normal fireball. But what we didn't expect was that the set was going to go up the way that it went up. Go! So when, when the explosion went off, I thought, right, OK, the explosion's finished. And then I saw the set catch fire, and within a minute, it was a, a blaze. And I looked at the firemen, and they were running with their hoses. And I looked at the hoses, there's no water in the hoses at all. And I kept on urging the water to come through because I knew I'd got a camera right at the bottom of the fire and there was molten polystyrene dripping down on top of it. It was pretty well protected, but I couldn't believe the scale of the inferno. It was huge. And I couldn't get closer to it than about 50 feet because the heat was phenomenal and the firemen kept, I kept on urging the water through the house, but it was a good minute or something. It seemed like about an hour before the water came through and, they, and, then, and then it took them about another 10 minutes to get the fire under control. And I was terrified because it was my B camera, movie cam compact, and I didn't want to lose another camera. And in, in, in the event, we just lost a cable, basically, and the camera, although it smelt a bit smoky, and, and we broke the glass filter on the front of the housing that we put the camera in, and the camera, in fact, was fine. And we got the technicians around, they checked it all out, and we're still using it. <laughs> yeah, I know, I was relieved.